Hey everybody, this is TJR. The first teaser trailer for Star Wars Episode Nine just hit. And already the internet is abuzz with trailer reaction and fan speculation videos. And while I have done a few, I don't normally do movie trailer reaction videos. I guess I should because these types of videos get tons and tons of traffic. I really can't blame anybody for, you know, producing them. Trailer speculation is a fun part of geek culture, but unfortunately, internet culture has turned what was once a fun aspect of geek culture into a blood sport, with toxic fans losing their heads over a trailer that has far too little information to base any real conclusions from. For the most part, I really don't get trailer reaction videos. I've watched some of them, and but mostly I avoid them because they all turn out to be just individuals watching the trailer going, ooh, oh, did you see that? Wow, oh, that was cool. Whoa, what was that all about? If a movie studio does their trailers right, the whole point is just to give you a taste of what to expect, to intrigue you with possibilities while giving you as few clues as possible as to what might actually happen in the film. And this is why, for the most part, I view trailer reaction videos to be largely useless. In fact, Avengers Infinity War actually faked out audiences with their trailer deliberately. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, to find out that the trailers for Endgame are doing the same thing. And it wouldn't surprise me that more blockbuster franchises do the same in their trailers as well, including Star Wars. But this time I am going to do one, not because it's Star Wars, but because there was just something I noticed as I watched this, and I was wondering if anybody else did too. At the beginning of this trailer, we have a shot of Rey. She's standing there on a barren landscape, looking determined. She starts to run, and then she performs an amazing feat using her Jedi powers. And as I watched this scene, I found myself thinking, doesn't this remind me of something? And then I remembered the recently released trailer for Frozen 2. I put together this side-by-side -side comparison to help out. Both of these trailers open with the heroine standing alone amidst a barren landscape, both looking very determined. Both have this brief moment of preparation. Then both of them break into a run. And then both of them give a very badass demonstration of their respective powers, Rey using her Jedi powers and Elsa using her Frozen powers. Now, I want to state that what I've just stated here is not a criticism of the film. It's just an observation. There are formulas to how trailers are made, and studios use these formulas because, well, because by and large, they work. They help get people intrigued to want to buy tickets and go see a movie. I just think that it's an interesting coincidence that the same studio would have two trailers for two very highly anticipated blockbuster films having such a very similar opening. Of course, if I want to put my uh, tinfoil hat on, there might be a more deliberate reason why these trailers have such similar openings. One of the primary agendas of Disney slash Lucasfilm in regards to the Star Wars movie franchise was, and no, I'm not gonna say feminism. It never was. The agenda was capitalism. When Star Wars originally came out, it was universally enjoyed and loved by everyone, all ages, all genders. But over the decades, and prior to Disney purchasing Lucasfilm, I noticed that the fan base gradually and slowly began to devolve into what I would refer to as primarily a boys club. Yeah, there'd be a few girls into it, but mostly it was just guys. Disney wants the other half of the planet's population buying Star Wars tickets, buying Star Wars merchandise. They want girls to be into the franchise. They want them anticipating these movies. And in my opinion, this is why these new trilogy of films decided to go with a female protagonist. I mean, they could have gone either way. It wouldn't have mattered. They could have gone with a male, female. So long as the character is interesting, it really doesn't matter. And this strategy seems to be working. I have been visiting downtown Disney now for decades. And as I walk around downtown Disney in Anaheim, I notice more young girls into Star Wars than I have 
ever, ever seen in years past. So perhaps the mirroring of the opening to the trailer for Frozen is deliberate. Young girls who are anxious to see Frozen 2 and have no doubt already seen that trailer a number of times will see this trailer for Star Wars Episode 9 and will subconsciously be reminded of it. The desired effect being that it will make them equally anxious to see Star Wars Episode 9 as they are for Frozen 2. Oh, and by the way, any Star Wars fans who think Rey is a Mary Sue and that the new movies have a secret feminist agenda, you can save your breath. I have seen all your propaganda videos that you link to, and it's all in my opinion. Rey is no more a Mary Sue than Luke Skywalker. I did one video entitled, How Does Rey Know So Much, that addresses this. Uh, I have an idea for another video that I want to do that addresses this as well, and addresses some of the comments that I received to that video. Uh, hopefully I will get a chance to make that video and post it relatively soon. So save your breath, I've heard it already in the same way that I've heard the Flat Earth conspiracies. Disney's only real agenda is capitalism. So what else does this trailer show us? Well, uh, we see what appears to be Kylo Ren repairing his Darth Vader wannabe helmet. I honestly hope this isn't the case. One thing I really liked about Last Jedi was when Snoke ridiculed Kylo for trying to be exactly that, a Darth Vader wannabe. Kylo Ren was an interesting character right from the very beginning, but he became even more interesting once he ditched the helmet. I personally hope that he does not regress back. Of course, this could be just another one of those trailer misdirections that I've talked about earlier. And again, all you fanboys who believed that The Last Jedi was the greatest affront to mankind that has ever existed, you can save your breath. And don't bother sending me links on any two-hour videos explaining why it's awful and why everyone must hate it. I've seen all the videos on this topic. Star Wars The Last Jedi, there are some very problematic things that are wrong with it. I'll admit that. There are also some things that are really great about it, too. Overall, I enjoyed it, and I hope that someday I can do what I feel will be a more balanced and more objective analysis of the film. Uh, one that isn't based around fans being angry that their fan theories were not validated, or the misguided belief that there was a somehow a feminist conspiracy behind all of this. And I never thought I'd have to address either of these two topics when talking about Star Wars. Now, we also get a shot of Billy Dee Williams as Lando Calrissian piloting the Millennium Falcon. Uh, this clip is, of course, here to play on the nostalgia of the older fans. It even has him wearing the exact same outfit that he wore in The Empire Strikes Back. This, of course, makes me laugh because just as people are not the same as they were 20 or 30 years ago, so have their tastes in clothes changed as well. I'm not wearing the same things I did 20 years ago. So I had to chuckle to myself when I saw this because the first thing I thought was, damn, you think you'd have something different to wear after all these years. We also get a shot of Carrie Fisher as General Leia. Now, it was announced some time ago that director J.J. Abrams planned on using footage of Carrie Fisher that was shot for The Last Jedi and that he was going to repurpose it for this motion picture. And this brings me to the choice of music for this trailer. Aside from a very long sustaining note during what I refer to as the Frozen 2 mirror sequence, primarily all we hear for this trailer is the John Williams Princess Leia theme. And I think that this music is used to beautiful effect for this trailer. I don't think they could have made a better choice. I think it will be interesting to see just how J.J. Abrams repurposes this older footage for this new motion picture. And I'm glad that we're going to get to see Carrie Fisher one more time in one of these movies. Now, throughout this entire trailer, we've been hearing Mark Hamill as the voiceover. Uh, I remember I thought it was funny how some fans just lost their minds over Luke Skywalker dying in The Last Jedi. Um, you know, Obi-Wan died in the first movie, but that didn't stop him from appearing in the next two. And Yoda dying in The Empire Strikes Back didn't keep him from appearing in these new movies either. So yeah, I mean, Luke being able to come back has always been a possibility. At the end of the trailer, we hear Luke say that no one's ever really gone. And then we hear that laugh. We hear the laugh of the Emperor uh, from the original movie series. And then we get the film's title, The Rise of Skywalker. So what does this all mean? 
There are already some on the internet who are speculating that this means that Rey is in fact a Skywalker and that what we were told in the last film, that she was a nobody, was a lie told to her by Kylo Ren. I know that there would be many Star Wars fans who would be very happy for this to be true, but personally, I hope this is not the case. I personally really like the idea that she wasn't from any great lineage. Making her a Skywalker, it's just too obvious. And in my opinion, it's lazy storytelling when it comes to this type of film. What's my Star Wars theory in regards to this title? Well, quite frankly, I don't do Star Wars theories, but if I had to, I would state that the juxtaposition of hearing the Emperor's menacing laugh just before the film's title is an indication that Luke is, or will become, the Emperor. Hey, what do I know? It's just a trailer. Who can tell anything from trailers? This is TJR. What do you think? Leave a comment. And everybody, take care out there. Just remember, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. And already the internet is abuzz with trailer reaction and span speculation. And already the internet is abuzz with trailer reaction and span... <laughs> span speculation. <laughs> oh, man. Three, two, one.